Hey, what's up guys? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. And it's never a good thing when we start the week off with a critical vulnerability. And that is what we find this morning. Uh, Veeam, uh, a very large backup and replication uh, solution across the enterprise, uh, disclosed over the weekend a critical vulnerability in their flagship product, Veeam Backup and Replication. Uh, as well as a very serious vulnerability in their Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows solution. So both of those are affected. So in this video, we're going to detail a bit more into those vulnerabilities, as well as how you can get these patched. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about these two vulnerabilities that we are discussing uh, for the topic of this video. So Veeam released two KB articles that are relevant to each product. So I'm going to detail these. Uh, KB article 4289 relates to the Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows. But we're going to key in on this second KB. It's uh, Veeam KB4288. And this is the uh, KB article from Veeam that relates to Veeam backup and replication. So uh, this is a really nasty one, uh, especially when you look at the severity of this particular uh, vulnerability. Uh, the CVS SV3 score is 9.8. And I don't, I'm not sure if you remember the uh, Log4j, if you looked at other products such as VMware, that was the rating for the Log4j vulnerability was 9.8. So this is a really uh, bad vulnerability. Uh, and as you can see, it not only affects the latest Veeam version, uh, it is 9.5, 10, and 11. So it's basically affects every version that is I would arguably say is in nearly 100% of the environments, uh, customer environments for uh, Veeam backup and replication. Now, what is the cost? Well, as we see here, Veeam distribution service running on TCP 9380, it allows unauthenticated users to access internal API functions. So an attacker that has access to this network port uh, is able to communicate with this API. So uh, sending GET or POST requests. They don't really detail exactly what they need to do to weaponize this, but uh, it can lead to them essentially being able to take over your environment to execute malicious code, uh, to do other things. So this is kind of a worst case scenario because the last environment that you want to have compromised is your backup environment because that's the break glass uh, environment that you pull your production data, data from if other uh, production uh, data is affected. So not only could an attacker uh, start with your Veeam environment, uh, from there they can uh, potentially la launch other attacks, ransomware attacks, who knows what, what the possibilities are there. So not really a good situation here. Um, the solution uh, is to install this patch version. And as you note, uh, they have the build uh, number next to 11A and 10A. And this new build is going to uh, represent the patch. Uh, so it's going to be P for patch 2022-03-02. And then for version 10, uh, P for patch 2022-03-04 uh, version. So if I click on the 11A, if you scroll all the way down, uh, you can see that uh, we've got the solution for either updating your environment with the patch or downloading the ISO image. And this is one to note that if you have yet to upgrade to version 11, and we're planning on doing that, if you have previously downloaded the ISO image for version 11, you want to go back and revisit this, re-download the ISO because they do mention that the ISO needs to be anything dated later than I believe March the 4th. So this ISO image is going to contain uh, that patch. 
however, if you're running version 11, as I am in the lab environment, you can simply download patch. And as you can see, I've logged into the portal and now the download is set to start in five seconds. So as you can see, it's already uh, downloading the zip file. It's a 2.4 gig uh, zip file. So as you can tell, it's a fairly large patch. They're most likely replacing a lot of things uh, even with a patch. However, historically the Veeam patches have been fairly large outside of just simply the ISO to perform a new installation. Now what I'm going to do is extract the patch. Okay, so I have the patch extracted and as you can see it's an executable. Uh, so we're going to, I'm just going to say run as administrator, right click run as administrator. Okay guys, so the executable, uh, it responded, uh, popped up this uh, installation wizard. So welcome to cumulative patch 2022-0302 for Veeam Backup and Replication 11A. So before I begin this wizard, what I'm trying to do uh, currently is I'm wanting to make sure that all of the Veeam services are stopped. So I'm just wanting to be proactive about that. Typically with any patch or upgrade, you want to make sure your services are stopped. That's gonna be part of the process. So what I like to do is a simple one-liner PowerShell uh, commandlet. You can just simply say, get service, where object, display name is like Veeam, and you can uh, use a wildcard here with the star, and then pop that into stop service, as you can see. Okay, so services have been stopped. As you can see, we've got the uh, little one-liner PowerShell script, and I'll put that in the notes uh, for the video. It has finished, so I'm going to simply minimize that. We'll go back to our cumulative patch, 2022-03-02, uh, Veeam 11A. So we're going to uh, step through the wizard. So uh, this is typical uh, from what we've seen in, with Veeam in the past with an update of components or a VBR server. Uh, so as we can see, we can choose to update remote components automatically. You just simply say install. So we're going to let the update wizard for the cumulative patch to install, and then we'll see what version and other information we can find. Okay, so the cumulative patch has been successfully installed, services were started, and now we simply have the click finish to exit the wizard. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say click finish. Uh, reboot is required for changes to take effect. Would you like to reboot the computer now? And this was a result of, uh, I did receive a file in use as it was uh, trying to uh, overwrite some components. So I just simply clicked ignore, which did tell me that it would require a reboot after the uh, patch was installed. So, okay guys, so I have rebooted the Veeam server in the lab and I just wanted to double check and make sure that all of the Veeam services are up and running, which it looks like they are. So in particular, the Veeam backup service is what we wanna see. So. Now that the console has launched, uh, we were prompted with this components update. So what we're gonna do is I have selected the vserve01.cloud.local, which is the uh, local Veeam server. I've got a couple of IO filters out here that are stale, so I uncheck those, and I'm simply leaving the checkbox here. So this says that it will update the mount server, tape proxy, and uh, what else do we have here? Details. Uh, Veeam agent for Linux, Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows, CDP, tape proxy. So all of those things will be updated uh, as part of this components update. So I'm gonna say apply. As we can see now, all components have been upgraded. So we're going to click finish. And one thing I'm going to do is re-enable all of the backup jobs that I had disabled previously before the update uh, began. So all of those have been updated. As expected, we see the P2022-0302 designation on this Veeam backup and replication 11A server. So the build is staying the same. However, they're simply designating this with this patch release number uh, suffixed to the build number. One thing I wanted to show you guys as well is that now we see our Windows agent 
uh, if I click into the properties of this Windows agent that I have set for Cloud Workstation 1, uh, one thing that we see right off the bat is that we see it requires upgrade. So this is not surprising as these need to be kept in lockstep for compatibility reasons and we realize that as part of this critical vulnerability, um, Windows agents are also affected uh, interacting with Veeam Backup and Replication Server. So how do we upgrade the uh, Veeam agent, Microsoft Windows agent? You can see I've navigated to Inventory and under Physical Infrastructure, Manually Added, I can see the Cloud Workstation 01. And as you notice, the status is showing Upgrade re Required. So how do we implement that upgrade? We'll simply right click, uh, go to Agent, and then as you can see, we've got an upgrade option. So I'm going to click the upgrade option and it's going to go through a process to discover the agent, enumerate the version currently installed, and it's going to push those components to our remote Veeam agent. So after just a few minutes, uh, as you can see here, it took around four minutes and 41 seconds it successfully upgraded the remote Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows. So now we should be successfully remediated for the Veeam backup and replication vulnerability that was disclosed, as well as the Veeam agent vulnerability uh, as a result of these disclosed vulnerabilities that were released this weekend. So hopefully this walkthrough of how to remediate your Veeam backup and replication server along with your Veeam agent will be beneficial to those that will this week be uh, tasked with remediating their environment from this critical vulnerability. Uh, it's definitely one that you want to give attention as it will allow an attacker to perhaps fully compromise your Veeam backup and replication server. Well, I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How-To. Please do hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.